Hello, everyone. It's um, Sunday once again uh, for me, which is this is the best day of the week for me because this is the time. This is the day when I get a chance to have a chat with some awesome drummers. And uh, it seems like a long time ago um, since we had the last um, drummer, we, um, after drummer, which is like Stuart Kidd. Um, that was like ages and I really miss chatting to amazing drummers and uh, today um, actually oh my god <laughs> we'll be chatting to a super awesome drummer and if I could just quote um, a good friend of mine so like Nick Cockshot um, and he commented on Ask the Drummer page and he said um, quote you've done the rest now you're doing the best and um, I must admit, I've only seen uh, this drummer once uh, play live, but I totally agree with Nick. She really is the best. So, my dear friends, uh, please welcome Fliss Kitson. Hi. Yay. <laughs> oh, I love the introduction. Gee. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, you really have got a lot of so sort of like fans. I mean, Nick, Nick is definitely one of them. Nick Cockshot. So, um, yeah. He's so he's, like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, how are you? How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm happy to be chatting to you. So, thank you oh. for having me. Oh, thank you so much for saying yes to Ask the Drummer. And also before um, anything else, I want to dedicate this episode to David Chambers. Um, David Chambers, the drummer of Ur, um, he's actually the one who asked me last year to get you on Ask the Drummer because he's another oh. one. <laughs> he's, he's a fan, he's a fan of yours. Um, but I think he's he, he's somewhere down south. He said yesterday they was like partying down south. I hope he'll join us, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, yeah, David, this is for you. <laughs> Oh. So, um, yeah, um, last time I saw you um, was at Gulliver's last year. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I saw you at the ladies. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Of course, I'm going to remember that because not many people say to me, Are you the drummer? whilst I'm, you know, out coming out of the toilet. So. <laughs> Because I was like, and that's again because of David. Because David said that you've got to interview her on After Drummer. Oh. So I just thought, I just thought, oh my god, I better ask her. Because uh, I mean, I mentioned it to you earlier before we um, came on live that I didn't really know much about the Nightingales before yeah. you know going to that gig. And um, yeah, I was actually there to see. Peter Aston. <laughs> exactly. Go on, Peter Aston. <laughs> exactly. This is why we get good support acts because we know that it's going to bring a few new people. So, <laughs> you know, obviously, yeah, it was great to have Pete Aston there and it made you, you know, you came. So that was great. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really, I'm really glad that I went there because I saw you and I saw the Nightingale, and you're just so amazing. Um, and David was right, you know, David was right. You were just mesmerizing. I was totally so like that night when I saw you. <laughs> I have to say, forgive me, Mr. Lloyd, but um, I was just <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> I wasn't really looking at the rest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I think it was just so great. But anyways, um, yeah, Trevor Palmer, who's in Skipton, he said, uh, hi, Fliss. So he's joined us. Hi, Trevor. And, yeah. Um, so, right. <laughs> so um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Um, episode episode 54, it's all about you, Fliss Kitson. Wow. Um, yeah, well, this is such a nice name. It's so unique. I don't think I've ever heard or I've never known anyone called Fliss. Yeah, um, it's, but it's, Felicity is the longer one, but yeah, Fliss is the... Yeah, so Felicity is your given name. Yeah. That's also, I mean, coming from the Philippines, I think that name is also very English and very posh. Yeah. <laughs> 
I guess it does sound a bit, yeah, but it's it means happiness, I think, in some way. And because, yeah, Felicity, it just doesn't, it never sat with me, really. It didn't. So I always went from Fliss from a very young age, like, yeah. All oh, right. Well, yeah. Like, how old were you when you started to, like, just, you know... I think I was going called Fliss for, for, yeah, for ages, like, since... Like since I remember being at school, so whatever that age is, oh, kind of this, yeah. Oh, brilliant! No, oh, that's good. Well, it's really nice. It's so unique. That's <laughs> like place is so unique. <laughs> um, and am I right in saying that you're born in Norwich? Is my sort of like research thing so like right? So yeah, that probably would lead you down that path. I was I was born in Wales, but it was more of like a drop off, give birth. And then we didn't have a house, so we didn't really have anywhere to live. So we were in Wales and then I kind of, my formative years growing up was in Norfolk, yeah. Right. Um, when Whenever I think of Norwich, because um, yeah. with me, <laughs> it's like, you know, being, because I'm not really from around here, but what I really like about the UK is like, um, every single city or town, I think of uh, famous bands that from the and Norwich, Maine. I always think of the Farmers Boys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You would, yeah. Yeah. That's true. And then, um, Bear Suits. I don't know if you know Bear Suit, but they were quite. Mm. Mm. Oh, they like indie, it's still quite indie. There was it's mainly like a lot of small kind of indie art rock bands from Norwich which um was really inspiring actually to be around so that was good. yeah so what was what was Norwich like when you were growing up especially sort of like the music scene um oh amazing yeah as I said like really inspiring loads of women in bands well you know from the age of 15 to 25 I was in band, in a band, one band, and um, yeah, loads of other girls playing music. So that was so inspiring and like led me down that like the right direction. And um, just gigs happening all the time, like local gigs and, and lots of support for each other's bands and going to all these gigs and very nice venues actually. So yeah, I feel really lucky that I was surrounded by such good music. Is, is there like a particular um, like club or um, a venue that you <clears throat> used to go to a lot and then that's where sort of like people start getting, you know, like they get inspired and they start forming bands and stuff? Is there a similar one in Norwich? Yeah, it's um, the art centre is probably like the hub of where everything happened, but it is quite big. So there were smaller venues um, like the marquee the marquee was um one of our favorites it's not there anymore but the art center is renowned it's still there and it's still like such a brilliant venue all right and um what well, you said that you've been in the band since you were like 15 or yeah. 15 16. but have you always been like the drummer or have you sort of like tried any other instruments no, I never dabbled actually, and I still can't play any other instruments. I was just like really focused. I want to be a drummer. When I, I got my first drum kit was at fourteen, so I was like, I I knew that was my path. I don't know why or how, and thankfully yeah. it kind of worked out, and I was all right. In it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never never kind of been drawn to any other instrument really. Oh, right. did you have any lessons? Did you did you go for drumming lessons or self taught? Yeah, so um, yeah, I was lucky that my parents were really supportive and they allowed me to have some drumming lessons. Um, so I started that, and I probably had lessons for two or three years, but very sporadically. It wasn't like weekly, and. Um, my teacher was amazing. Um, he's in lots of kind of punk bands now. He's he's um, he's doing really well. He he was so inspiring and taught me taught me how to look at the drums differently to kind of what I was, you know, believed it to be. You know, to believe drumming to be like kind of like straight. He he opened up my mind a lot and 
we drum to a lot of music. Like I would bring in a track and he would bring in a track and it was it was fun. I did do some grains, but I was never really very good at that. <laughs> 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 it's not like um uh i've only sort of like discovered this i found out about this when i was doing the when i started doing as the drummer like these paradiddles <laughs> oh, God, like yeah. rudiments and stuff that's not happening for me no <laughs> i mean I, I i can probably i did do them i'm not really interested in in the technical side of drumming i'm just not interested not really impressed by it I mean, it's cool, but I'm not, I'd never spot a paradiddle at a gig or some kind of riddle, diddle, whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's not, I'm not interested in that side of it, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say hello to Spence Roberts. Um, Spence, oh, yeah. Yeah. Spence said, is a great drummer, and Gales are probably the best. They have ever been in his oh his that's really that's nice that's very kind <laughs> but so what was the name of your very first so sort of like band and did you have any sort of like uh did you get a recording a uh, contract or did you do any like albums or did you release any single something like that yeah so um the first band that we actually played a gig, like got out of the garage, was um, Violet Violet. And we were, I was in that band for um, 10 years. And we did thankfully have, there was a little label in Norwich called NR1 and they were really supportive. And they put out a, a CD album to start with. And then we had a couple of seven inches, which was amazing. That, yeah, it was quite expensive. I mean, it wasn't as expensive then, but um, we had really good support from them. And we kind of got to get out of Norwich as well, which, you know, it's hard when, it's hard to get out of where, where, you, where, you're, where you form, isn't it? If you're not very popular, we weren't very popular, but um, there was a lot more like art rocky, like big bills, really big, like five, six band bills that, around that time um and we played a lot of art rocker shows actually the magazine um they were really supportive as well so it was honestly like some of the best years of my life being that band it really was amazing yeah um <clears throat> before i actually ask about this violet violet because i've got a really i received a really lovely message from someone um about your band but um i, I looked you up on discogs and it says that you were you ever a member of pram because i looked yeah I looked up on wikipedia and um according to discogs you're a member of pram but according to wikipedia you well your name is actually not listed in their previous or their past members or something so uh what was yeah. so what was it <laughs> uh when was it i uh, I think around 2018, they asked me to do some gigs with them and I'm a massive fan. And I kind of wanted to, I don't really get asked to do much drumming outside of this band. Um, but that's fine because I'm really, you know, dedicated to this, but I, I liked the idea of the challenge because it is different drumming and it's playing to a back, backing track, which I've never done before. I don't even play to a click track at the studio, so it was, I, I kind of just wanted to do something a bit different and it was only a few gigs. It didn't really, you know, you know, take up my attention from the gales or anything. But um, so I did that and that was really good. And we really got on as well, like just as people, they're really lovely people. And I guess, yeah, I, if they were to gig, you know, next year or so, they'd probably yeah. Yeah, ask me to drum still, which is really nice. All right, so you technically so like a member. You're a part of. You're yeah, I'm an honorary member. Yeah. Is it like yeah. like a collective? Was is Pram like a collective, or is it like just so sort of like uh, with lots of other musicians so sort of like joining them or? No, it's not actually. It's kind of like they've had this base of a band um, for 
a, yeah, quite a few solid years. Um, their drummers just seem to change a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I want to say hello to Monty Mendigoria. Monty is in Manila. Hello, uh, hello, Monty. Oh, yeah. hi, Monty. Yeah, yeah. He's got um, um, a podcast as well where I patterned this as the drummer. He does sort of like New Wave. It, it's called, it's oh, all about right. New Wave. Because cool. New Wave is massive in the Philippines. So <laughs> I'm not, I don't think, because the Nightingales have been going since like early 70s or late 70s. But late 70s I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure if they were part of the new wave scene. So maybe that's the reason why we never really heard of the Nightingales. I don't think the they were part of any scene really. It is quite niche. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not the most popular band in the world now. But we're probably like. It's, I guess it always gets put into the post-punk category, but um, yeah, yeah, we don't make our minds unique. up about that. It's a unique. You've got your own sort of like genre. <laughs> yeah, we're just out here by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's. Exactly. Yeah. Well, going back to Violet, Violet. Um, mm -hmm. So i've received this really really lovely message from someone who's known you since your violet pilot days um oh his name goodness. is david david donlin oh i love yeah dave yeah david on well he said that he's known you for over a decade and during the early days of violet pilot and he's been blown away ever since by your drumming skills uh so he also said that um that you're one of the most unique and fascinating drummers he'd ever seen and um he said that you're one of the best drummers in the country and a great singer too which i totally oh. agree oh <laughs> yeah. he's, totally he's been my cheerleader from yeah for a very long time and he's also a drug he's multi-instrumentist like he's plays all the instruments um really supportive throughout and it's just so lovely that he still you know keeps updated with what I'm doing and that we I saw him at our last Norwich gig um yeah he's wonderful so that's really nice I really respect his opinion so oh and he also said that you change his playing and you continue to inspire him up to this day so Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, that's so nice. So, what what happened to Violet Violet? Um, yeah, a bit of a weird one, really. I feel like we don't know why it kind of ended. We it we went on a hiatus, even though like we just kind of said hiatus, indefinite hiatus, because um. It was me and this other girl, Cherie, who were still like, you know, the best of friends. And she kind of wanted to go to university and go to France. And we were kind of at a level that was just a bit, it was taking all of our time up. And we were still so young. And we, we're kind of all or nothing people. We're very passionate and kind of like everything, put everything into it. As kind of what I do now with the Gale, it's like everything kind of, takes up my whole life really. And this is what Violet Violet was happening. But because we were so young and we had like other things that we wanted to do and she wanted to go to uni, we kind of thought, you know what, it's not gonna get any further. Maybe we should just have a break. And we did and we haven't, we, I don't think we'd ever get back together as Violet Violet. It would seem a bit odd to be singing about the kind of things that we were singing about then because we've, I mean, it was really fun, but it was like really bitchy and um, a bit mean. Oh. Um, and we've kind of grown oh. up since then. <laughs> so, I mean, I would absolutely love to play with her again. She's an incredible guitarist. And, and like I said, being in a band with your best friend, like that's just <laughs> ideal. So maybe we'd do something again in the future. I don't know, but she's killing it in her career. So. I wouldn't want to like take her away from that again. So and you've yeah. got the nightingales now. Right? Exactly. So, and, yeah. Yeah. And maybe maybe a one off reunion thing or something, just so like you know, I mean no one would I don't think anyone would come. Maybe Dave, Dave <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. 
about it, Anthony. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's um, worth it for Dave, to be fair. We, we could do it today. <laughs> um, and before I ask you about the Nightingales, I've also read that you were in another band called uh, The Broken Seas. But oh, I, couldn't find any, I couldn't find any information about The Broken Seas, though. So uh, can you tell that's, us more? That's about fine. That? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was in a couple of bands in Norwich called, yeah, The Broken Seas was one, an amazing guitar player he was, Matt. Um, and then I was in another band called There's Someone in the Pond. That was really fun, garage, silly, just playing, like, just being silly. I love that. Um, very comical. They were just like, j both of those bands were kind of just, experimenting and playing different things. I lived in Norwich at the time. I was kind of coming, going to come over to Birmingham. So um, I just, basically, I just wanted to drum as much as possible. And um, there were some great musicians in Norwich and these guys, we formed a band. So yeah, good times. Uh, are you in, uh, do you live in Birmingham now? Or not? Yeah, like, I live in Birmingham. Where you are, yeah. Yeah. Is that where most of the, uh, the Nightingales band members are? <laughs> yeah, we kind of well, we are a bit spread out. So our bass player actually lives in Germany, so that's a little bit of a commute. Um, and then, yeah, um, me and the guitarist live in Birmingham, and Robert lives in Telford. So we practice in around this area in the Midlands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now that we sort of like go to the Nightingales, I mean, I know that they've been around for like over forty years and yeah <laughs> sometimes i think it's like i was telling you about blurt earlier because i went to see them last friday and the same as the nightingales they've been going around for like 40 years and stuff and i've never heard of them and it's like the same with the nightingales i've never heard of them until i saw you last year yeah. um um when when did you actually join the band um I think it surely, was. I mean, I was going to say, um, uh, surely you're not that old. <laughs> I mean, you're very young. No, no, no. I'm, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like a skincare routine. Yeah. <laughs> I joined them um, in 2010-ish, I think. So, yeah, it's kind of like 12 years. That's... Um, and they, yeah, they've been going for so long. I mean, with a little gap. I think somewhere but um and it is it is un underground it's like un the underdogs I, I it's nice to hear like that you hadn't heard of us till you came to our gig because you actually did come to the gig so you, then you found out about us because yeah it, I mean you know we we are quite a small band really but we have a really good following and it is getting getting more and also the, the audience is like there's lots more women coming there's like younger people so um that's nice yeah yeah but how how did it happen though did you audition for them or oh yeah um sorry i've, I've gone off that question <laughs> no, uh, that's like... <laughs> it, was, it was because um i was in violet violet we just um violet violet used to support the nightingales across the uk and europe um, oh, so I kind of, yeah, I kind of knew, got to know them through that. Um, and then as Violet Violet ended, the Nice Girls drummer um, left and Rob phoned me up and said, did I want to be in the band? So, and I said, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's were, kind of were, it. Were you a fan or? Yeah, or... a big fan. Yeah. Oh, you're a big a fan of that. Fan. And, and, and very importantly, a massive fan of the previous drummer um, who really guided my, really guided me in in my style now of drumming. Like, um, he totally changed my outlook on, on everything. I did have that kind of style before, like sporadic, falling down the stairs kind of drumming. But um, watching him, we were supporting the Nice Girls and watching him drumming was... Um, unbelievable um the best kind of teaching i ever got 
you know, was through watching him. So it was an absolute honour to take that throne off him. And, uh, you know, he went on to do, you know, bigger and better stuff, really. But so um, he's, yeah. he's amazing. And it was great to be part of it. And I was honoured to be asked. So was that partly the reason why Violet Violet split up or, or not really split up, but went on a hiatus or? No, it was totally, it sounds a bit like perfect timing, weird timing, but it was, it was yeah. totally separate. I wasn't part of the Nightingales before that, that split and I was never asked to drum for the Nightingales until that band was over. So no, it was, it was, oh, yeah. 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 Well, Travis got a question for you. Uh, he said, did you have to learn 30 years worth of material or just <laughs> stick to the albums? Yeah, that's a good question. It was really difficult, I will be honest. Um, I joined the band and we had two weeks until the first gig. They already had gigs in Europe booked. And um, I they gave me a set list. And um, if you don't know the Nightingale's um, how we play live it's it's a really long set because some songs are really short but they all go into one another so um it's quite intense and to learn those songs in two weeks was really hard i just booked out a studio in norwich and booked the drum kit for i mean like every day for a couple of hours and just really tried but it was difficult to because I didn't actually really play like that until I got in into this band really. It was it was a really hard challenge, but it was good. But yeah, through through the years now I've probably played quite a lot of the material from the past, but um now we really just focus on the new newer stuff. The new yeah. Well I did cool. notice that when I saw you last year, because I normally try and even though I don't know any of the songs, I try to record uh, some some of the songs so I can put it yeah. on YouTube and stuff. Because you know, I know that some people are like fans of the Nightingale since I've been, since I was there. Uh, I might as well <laughs> stuff. But one thing that I noticed is that um, there seemed to be no end from one song. It's like it's just one <laughs> long song, and yeah. sometimes. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Where do I begin the recording? It seems to be so like just you know he's yeah. not saying much. There's no ending. <laughs> just... No, exactly. It's, it is quite relentless, and it's probably quite uncomfortable if you're not into that. Um, but yeah, we're kind of like this is what we do. We don't really have anything else to say, and it it does work. I think like it does go down quite well and it's really fun. I find it really fun as a musician to do that. Although you don't really get a moment to like have a drink or take your jacket off. But um, yeah. I think it's just what we do now. It's just become part of it. It's just one big chunk of music. And if you get to know the songs a bit better, you'll be able to tell what's coming, you know, yeah. which one's coming. Which is sort of like the beginning of a new song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I find it hard to tell. <laughs> like, but well, yeah. Travis, Travis said that he got uh, his first Gales record in 1983. Wow, that's a long time. And um, yeah. Rob, Rob Jones, uh, he said hello from Liverpool. Rob is also a drummer. Um, he's a drummer with the High Five and Wahid. So. He's got a question, which is, did you ever have drum lessons? And I think it was late because you did say, yes, you did. Yeah. You did. <laughs> yeah, I had, yeah, drum lessons from like 13, 14 to maybe six, maybe 17-ish. Yeah. It was quite a while, but it wasn't like every every week or anything. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Aiden the Rock, which is like my husband and my tech support, he said that the uh, all looking sounding a okay. <laughs> so, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Wikipedia is really funny sometimes because I looked up um, the Nightingales and uh, it lists so sort of, like all the members, current members and past members. Mm -hmm. And um, your name, it actually says that um, from 2011 or 2010 
to until 2018, you're only doing the drum. You're like the drummer. But then it changed uh, from 2018 onwards. You now have also have a line for vocalist. So it's like oh, <laughs> oh, I've transitioned. <laughs> Nice. I like that. From 2018, I found my voice. Yeah. Did you not do any thought like singing in the beginning or? I think actually that's probably about right. I think that album Perish, oh no, Perish for, yeah. I think I started singing a bit more. Um, So, but yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the story of the nightingales. I mean, this one also. I found I found out about it last year as well. But I tried to like um, looking for it this week because the story of the nightingales and Robert Lloyd was sort of like told in this film called um, King Rocker. Um, but of course, I didn't get a chance to see it, so I don't. Really I'll send know. you it. I'll send you it. <laughs> uh, so. Um, so you're part of that sort of like story, part of the film? Well, I guess, yeah, I'm part of the story now, but like it was really kind of focused on Robert's life and, um, you know, his his journey in music and the career, well, career, but like, yeah, from the prefects to the Nightingales. And that, that's kind of the, the main focus of the film. And I come in a bit later, obviously. So, yeah. That was great. It was amazing to be part of it, and um, a real. I'm really glad that Stuart Lee and Michael had the belief in that film because it. We no one knew how it was going to go. Like if it was going to like be anyone was going to watch it or anyone was interested, but it did go really well. So yeah, please. Well, the title, the title of the film, King Rocker, is mm. that like a reference to a song or is no? Well, it is a song, isn't it? Is it a Billy Idol song? Oh, no. It's a Billy. Yeah, that's what I thought when I when I saw it's yeah. King Rock. I thought it's, it's not Generation. Not like no, 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 sadly, okay. not sad. Well, there's no connection with Billy yet. Um, I think it was because the story linked. The story was told linked in with Robert and the the massive King Kong statue that was in Birmingham and the the life and the travel, you know, it traveled around that it was interlinked with the story of the King Kong statue. So King, Rocker, I don't know. I can't give you any more info on that because I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got nothing to do with Billy Idol or so, like generations. Nothing to do with Billy Idol. You will be so, so disappointed if you, well, you might actually be presently surprised if you bought that thinking, oh, Goodness, the Billy Idol <laughs> film. Just about that song. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, Trevor said that King Rocker is a great film and really enjoyable. Ah. So. <laughs> oh, that's so um, cool. Yeah. Um, so um, you've got a new album, um, which I've, I've I've told you earlier on Facebook. I've seen some people saw sort of like posting it they've already got a copy but it's out uh when's it going to be so, yeah the new album it's called the last laugh and it's out officially next friday but um the pre or yeah if the if people pre-ordered it through our band camp they've got it early which we didn't really know that was happening but that's quite cool i think because I pre-order stuff and sometimes you don't get it. Like we were saying, you don't get it until after even the shops. And yeah. so it's kind of like, why did I do that? So, yeah. um, and, and then some people it. actually get it earlier because they've been to the shop and they've got it on the day that it was released. Exactly. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of weird thinking that people are listening to that. It's been like a year since we recorded it and it's just such a strange feeling knowing that people are putting that on their turntable right maybe right now and hearing those songs because i didn't expect that to be happening for a week so that's exciting though uh, even like robert actually hasn't even got his copy yet so people have got it before <laughs> we've got it <laughs> I've got, we'll fix that next week <laughs> i've got to mention um neil neil winwood 
<clears throat> yeah. he's a new one was a good friend of mine and he's actually posted a photo of so like the new the nightingales album and <clears throat> he's received this copy and he also said that fliss is fab so uh... <laughs> oh, thank you Dale. Okay, uh, um, <laughs> well i also um watched this um uh youtube podcast or a podcast that you did with john rob because uh, I mean, I could never be. I love John Rock. I think he's yeah. like the coolest. The coolest or like. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could yeah, be yeah, like him. He's fascinating. He's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I watched that um, podcast that he did with you, and mm -hmm. he was talking about the album. So I found out from there that you've actually um, your your inputs so are like really you know that's got a lot from you because you did you write well not the lyrics he said that it's not the lyrics but the music yeah yeah so, yeah. yeah so the, yeah this new album is it was written a bit differently um for various reasons and i just got really into writing on garage band which i can't play like i said i can't play any other instruments but with garage band you can if you've got an idea, you can kind of put it to put it to the computer and it will do it all for you. So I have a lot of ideas of riffs and guitar parts and bass parts and melodies and stuff. Um, so it's like the first time I'd actually written whole pieces of whole songs. Um, and so, yeah, maybe six or seven tracks I wrote on this album, which is um, amazing. Well, m mainly so that the band also were like digging what I was doing, which was nice. And um, when we were at the studio, obviously, like everyone took their parts and did whatever. And um, we were able to actually play what I'd written. So that was good. Um, and, yeah. and then it kind of all came together at the end. But yeah, it was really nice. And I found the... Uh, brass key on Garage Band and got really into you know having brass. So there's brass on this album for the first time, which is exciting. <laughs> um, and when we tour, we've got well, we're not it's tour, but like we've got four gigs coming up in November, and we're going to have people playing brass as well on stage with us because we want to play these songs live finally. Live, and yeah. So like reimagine some of the older Gale's songs with brass on top. So that's really exciting. I'm really happy about that. Well, um, yeah. you mentioned Garage Band because when I was listening to it, and um, I was so like thinking, I, I was so like, <laughs> I wasn't really aware of this because it's a software, isn't it? This Garage Band, is it? Am yeah, I yeah. yeah. Like? I mean, it's like a, it's like an app. But I'm really, yeah. I'm not very technical <laughs> at all. Like, I'm not a computer person. i yeah, can't well, read music, but. It's yeah. It's easy. It's easy to use. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I was so like it didn't click uh, first time, and I was so like thinking, was she like in a garage band or something? Because you know they're like oh, bands oh, in yeah. the whole garage <laughs> band, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what, what was she talking about? It's not like this garage, and then it, and then it clicked, and I was like, oh, it's this software that you use or an yeah. app that you explain use. Explain myself better. I'm not used to being interviewed, so I, I should have like maybe yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's some. It's a. It's really fun to play around with. Actually, you should try it. There's um, really funny drum kit on it, and you like tap the drums to make a beat. So it's oh, fun. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, again, Trevor's got a question for you. Uh, how did you get involved with the artwork? Do you have an art background? Oh, he's got great questions. Well, wow, thank you. <laughs> have a good one. Um, uh, I went to art school um, when I was, when I went to university and did art there, but I didn't really do um, painting or anything. Um, that's another story. And uh, then I, I did start doing like illustrations and stuff. And I did, when I joined the Nightingales, I kind of like started designing the merchandise well because they didn't really have any merch and they didn't really have an online presence so I kind of like took that on board and like started designing did logos and stuff and that was really fun and then 
We had an artist, and we, we love him, David Jates. He's an amazing collage artist, and he does most of the sleeves apart from the ones I've done. And I've only come in to do those because, you know, we might not have been able to do, do it at the time. Um, and so then I took it over on those albums. I mean, he always gets first dibs. We always ask him first. And if he yeah. can't do it, he hasn't got the time to do it, then um, I'll give it a go. So, and the last two I've done, I'm really happy with them. And they're, they're kind of like um, painting with collage on top. And the collage is all references to lyrics or songs on the album, stuff that Rob has told me, you know, this is referenced here, maybe put that on it. So, um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, um, well, Trevor also said that he's now in a brass band. He's in Yorkshire, so it's like one of those, so like when he talks <laughs> about the brass band, it's like, it makes me think of that film, Brass Top. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and um, Aiden said, I mean, my husband, he said that he uses Garage Band as well to experiment with musical ideas, because he's also a musician. And my daughter is a musician as well, so it's good. But um, you, you, Talk, you said before that you've got this four gigs coming in November. I actually made a mistake because I put it in my diary as the, um, I thought it was on Tuesday. I thought it was like the 11th of October, but it's actually 11th November when you're playing at Heb Hebden Bridge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been to that venue before? Yeah, yeah, because I love Hebden Bridge and I thought I'm going to so, like go and see them in Hebden Bridge on Tuesday, <laughs> this coming Tuesday. And then I tried to sort of like, no. <laughs> I, I tried to sort of like Google for tickets and I was sort of like, how come it says that there's no, there's no sort of like- There's no think, gig happening there. No, <laughs> and I think you played there last year. Yes. Yeah, we so, played there quite a lot actually, but um, it's really nice. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah. you know the venue, it's an amazing venue. The sound is great. Um, they're lovely people, really nice. They like um, such a good rep, like really lovely people. So it's good to play there. And we only wanted to do like one, one show in Scotland, one show up north, one Midlands, one south. So we picked yeah. Hebden Bridge. Yeah. It's a yeah. fab uh, venue. I love, I love the trade squad. So hopefully, it is. Hope, yeah, hopefully if I'm well, <laughs> then I would like yeah. to sort go and see you in Hebden Bridge on oh, of course you can be in my November. Guest. Yeah in November yeah. not not this in November, <laughs> not this <day. laughs> now, now one thing I really want to ask you is your drum kit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um that's why I posted so like um on the Astro Drummer page to remind people that you're gonna be um live today. Yeah there's this symbol that's like oh like, yeah when i saw it i was like oh my god <laughs> take my people like what, that what's, yeah what's that? so what's what's the story of that so like it's, uh, it's, it's funny yeah that symbol gets like more attention than the band most <laughs> 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 it's definitely a talking point it's basically like um, a really crap symbol, just like a really tinny, thin symbol. It looks like a symbol, and I found it in a skip. And um, I was a bit symbolless at the time, so I got it. And it's so bad that when you hit it, it just kind of like dented. But I really liked the sound of it because it did sound like a tin can, just like a really, really <laughs> awful. And I loved it. Um, so I kind of just had it and i think i would say it's flowered and now it's like yeah, it's, it's, all, that's, that's, it's all kind of bent it's blossomed hasn't it it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's what i thought i thought it was like a flower and so you didn't <laughs> you, so you didn't design it like that oh no no it's just like because it's not precious it's just like a really like nothing didn't cost me anything i just kind of whack it and then it just does what it does I think I'll, it's not going to last much longer, so maybe these dates will be the last time because it is actually falling oh. apart. And I do worry, oh, like, yeah. I'll hit it and it'll, like, it could really hurt, actually. So I need to, like, be a little careful with that one this time. But, yeah. Because <laughs> that's 
really unique. I mean, I've never seen so like I always when I go to gigs, I always so like make sure that I watch the drummers and I look at their kit and stuff. That's the first time I've seen it. It was like, and apart from that, also you've got uh, like purple shiny, like glittery mm. drum kit, and I thought, God, this is so cool. <laughs> Well, that's so, the, the purple shiny is is a weird one. It's like if you were up close to it, you would look at it and think that is DIY because I did it myself. Like I just got this um, drum wrap and then wrapped it all myself, but it's really badly done. And I would love to one day like be able to afford someone to do it professionally because it's yeah, I I love my drum kit so much. It's I've had it since I was seventeen. It's a Sonar Force. And it's so powerful live. It's such a good drum kit, but I just don't like the finish of it. So I keep trying to wrap it and make it glittery and purple. <laughs> but because <laughs> that's my dream, purple glitter. If there's any <laughs> drum companies listening, sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. No, it's such a brilliant, a brilliant sort of like drum kit. <laughs> Um, yeah, again, Trevor said that he's got a ticket for Hebden Bridge, so you're gonna start like being there. <laughs> hey, there's not so, many tickets uh, left, actually, so that's good. Yeah, um, so, um, when you're not on stage, when you're not mm -hmm. drumming and you're not singing, uh, I've read, I don't know if this is true though, but I've read that you're like a museum guy. Oh my god, wow. Um, I did do that a very long time ago. Maybe like when I lived in Norwich, I did um, a museum guiding at the Sainsbury Centre. They have like 10 Francis Bacon paintings and I would take visitors around and talk about those with them. But yeah, sadly that was short lived because then I moved to Birmingham and <clears throat> yeah, oh, I don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore but you're still an artist because i'm that's another thing that i've read that you're still very much into art and you do your own art and you you know do you have like uh, an exhibition or do you sell no. your art i yeah i'm a bit shy about the art thing because i just i don't know I, I do still do art and i do like like to express myself in art but i don't show it off very often because I don't know I don't feel as um sure about that like the drumming stuff I'm like really sure about it I like know that I'm all right and I'm, but the art is so biased isn't it and you just I don't know but I do do stuff and I have sold a few paintings and that's really nice and I've had a few commissions since doing the Nancy Girls artwork that have really like helped me you know out in the pandemic getting some commissions was really good so all right yeah. well the ones hanging there on your wall are those yours are those your art <laughs> no they're not mine they're really good they're an artist i like called faye morehouse yeah they're just oh, like so... they're basically postcards but i really like her stuff um so i've kind of put them up <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> 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 well, another one that um, another job that I've, I've read that you used to do is taxidermist. Oh my god, is my CV online? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say like, and you worked at the Hogshead in <laughs> Wolverhampton between. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Um, I did do taxidermy. Yeah. I did that at art school, so I've learnt the oh. art of taxidermy. Yeah, and um, I didn't ever do it to sell, so I didn't sell any taxidermy or do go down that route, but I did it for, you know, probably five or six years, and I have a lot of taxidermy of my own, and I was just fascinated with it, and I got... Yeah, I got a really nice teacher in Norfolk, um, in the middle of nowhere in a field, and he he taught me how to do it. It's not something that I would go back to, I don't think, ever, even though I think you can probably make quite a lot of money from doing that. But And I really enjoyed it, but it kind of it's, it is it will, would be a life because it takes up so much time and a lot of room and a lot of freezer space. So <laughs> I was like, 
taxidermy or focus on drumming and I went drumming. <laughs> drumming to be honest yeah <laughs> so, so that's that's basically your sort of like main job now is you're the drummer of the nightingales um it i mean we, we do pretty well now like it's it goes well but you, we only do well when we gig and we don't gig that often so i do have other work and i <clears throat> i'm the kind of the work that i'm doing now is that i help a lot of bands book tours and gigs because i've, I've yeah, I've never really said that actually anywhere, but that's what I do. Okay, so it's still in the music, sort of like music business. Still and... in the music, yeah, and I really enjoy it. And uh, I just discovered that I was all right at doing that for the Gales because I book all of our shows and stuff. And, um, and a lot of bands, you know, struggle with that or also don't have the time to do it because it takes up so much time and it's really... It can be a bit soul destroying booking tours and stuff because you don't get any answers from anyone. It's really difficult to get contacts. People are very precious about their contacts and it's really hard. So I try, yeah, I'm helping other bands tour at the moment. So yeah, it's kind of a new job. So it's going well. Though. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, do, does anyone ever get so like starstruck? They're so like, oh my god, it's this. I was like, let's get no, it. Absolutely. No. no one, no, no one knows me. Absolutely, <laughs> that never happens. So, I mean, that, one day maybe that would be nice, but I don't think so. It's more me being starstruck. Um, so. okay. <laughs> do you ever? Do you ever so sort of like? Uh, get so like starstruck when you do you go to gigs a lot or do you oh, yeah i go to a lot of gigs i went to see last night i went to see the blue orchids do you know them oh yeah martin yeah Ma martin yeah martin, martin. martin. Yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> big fan um that was really good i go to gigs yeah like once a week probably on average there's a lot happening in Birmingham that's really good so um and there's lots of lots of great local bands as well not just big touring bands so I go to a lot of gigs, but I don't meet that many musicians, really. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know if I've ever been properly starstruck yet. But I mean, when I first met Stuart Lee, it was quite special. Um, All right. And, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but well, when you go when you go to gigs, do you actually look at the drummer and sort of like see oh this. You know what? I'm going to really disappoint you now and uh, say no. I don't. I don't often. Oh, no. <laughs> no. no. Um, wow, that's really. <laughs> I'm really <everything laughs> out loud. No, not really. I kind of like. I don't get in. Um, I don't pay much attention to drummers on a whole. Actually, I'm, it's more like the whole thing. And yeah. I'm only really interested if they're doing maybe something very unusual, and it's been a, it's been a while actually since I took any notice of of the drummer, you know, a specific musician. <clears throat> Until recently, I went to see it was last year. I went to see Gong, you know, Gong. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And their drummer, he's not the original drummer, of course, but like their drummer now is incredible and it was so inspiring and i i just haven't felt like that about a drummer for years like he he's called chip nettles and um I, I can't find anything online about him like he's it doesn't he's not in any photos of the band he's like really behind the scenes even like live yeah. like the lights aren't on him but the drumming is phenomenal and i i just haven't had that moment watching a drummer for years and um he we i don't know i must have tweeted it or something i was like really into it and then we played norwich the nightingales played norwich and after the gig this guy comes up to me and goes hi Fliss, i hear you've been raving about me on twitter and i was like oh god who is this and he goes i'm the drummer in gong and I've come to see you play now. And I was like, what? That's amazing. I was really, oh, that was kind of like, I guess I was kind of going back to the starstruck. Like, I was like, wow, this is, that was, that really made me happy. 
Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, you should check if you don't or haven't already seen them live. I think they're touring now. Honestly, yeah. he's phenomenal, like so great all over the place, but technically, yeah, technically yeah. on it. Well, that's the power of social media, isn't it? It's not like post about one I know. person. <laughs> like, he's not even on social media. So I'm like, who's who's the little star <laughs> out there? Like, thank you, because he actually came to see his play. Like, oh, that was wonderful. Um, Gong, isn't that sort of like another old band? Is it like from the 70s? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah, old. But, but... Yeah, I know that um, they're records are so like expensive because you know that work at King B and Manchester and sometimes I see records by Gong and it's like oh, who are they how come their records are very expensive and stuff yeah it's very popular and, but, it's, but it's I guess maybe there wasn't like many pressed at the time I don't know I mean Camembert Electric is is their most popular album I guess yeah, but I, think, yeah. I don't think I think it's because I don't know Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know if they've been reissued or I don't know if they've gone through that reissue yeah, system I, I yet, maybe. The original is probably like the expensive ones because when I see all these sort of like records and uh, I post them on Instagram, I'm sort of like thinking, who are these bands? I mean, how come those are? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then, and then sometimes discover. records... Yeah, and then you see records of the bands that you like, and they're only like a pound or two pounds, which is good for me because <laughs> I'm really happy about that because I can get it. But well, maybe, they, maybe they had more pressed as well. Like, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. But anyway, so talking about um, what about the drummers? Do you have any drumming heroes? Um, I would say. Janet Vice from Sleet Kinney. Yeah. yeah. No longer in Sleet Kinney. But um, she was the reason I started drumming, definitely. Um, oh. And yeah, I think she's really wonderful and she plays a lot of toms, um, which is what I kind of focus on the tom work. So um, I would, she'd be up there and also. Darren Garrett from the ex Nightingale's drummer. Um, he, oh, yeah. It's those two, yeah. 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 Well, Janet Vice, you, the first time I've actually heard that name is um, from another amazing drummer, Lila, Lila O'Sullivan of Lines. Yeah, I watched yeah. your podcast with her. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she she mentioned she mentioned that band as well. I so, like another band that I so like I didn't have a clue. <laughs> They've passed you by, yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much noise out there. It's like, it's always good. To, well, I, I honestly recommend, yeah, if you haven't listened to them yet, the drumming on one beat is um, is really good. Right, yeah, yeah. This, well, um, I've seen you play live, but the one thing that I don't think I've noticed, uh, do you twirl? No, I can't twirl. <laughs> I thought... You've really hit her nerve, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing like that, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know. No. No. Is that a, <laughs> you? Are you impressed by a twelve? Oh I God. just think they're amazing when when the drummers sort of like do that and then they stop playing. And <laughs> no, I'm more like yeah, I'm more like dancing around yeah. rather than yeah. twirling, but um. It's I've always there's still time to learn, isn't it? But I, I just haven't really got the knack for it. <laughs> if no, it will impress you, I'll try for Hedden Bridge. I'll try oh, for her. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things that I really like, but especially when they start a song as well, when they do this one, two, three. <laughs> I yes, love I those as well. Yeah, I don't ever yeah. get to do one, two, three, four because they all go into each song. It's so I never really, yeah. I need yeah. a 12 man. I need to, to yeah, <laughs> I got to learn. <laughs> well, well, I look forward to that. I look forward to sort of like seeing you and hopefully I'll capture it as well. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to learn it for you, honestly. Yeah. Challenge <laughs> <laughs> Well, and 
another um, question that I like to ask, so like drummers, is um, have you ever had any sort of like drumming disasters? So have you fallen off the chair? <laughs> Yeah, oh, I've got a good one actually. Um, this is a little bit embarrassing, but when I was when I was the first in my in Violet Violet in the band, I had very short hair. I wanted long hair like this, so I used to wear extensions in my hair, like just clip in kind of things. Yeah, I was about seventeen, um, and I was drumming, and my stick was so like kind of uh, splintered like all the wood was spinted on the stick. And I was drumming and my hair extensions got stuck on my drumstick and came out of my hair. And my drumstick <laughs> just had all of my hair extensions on. And I was oh like, my oh my God. <laughs> like, I've got no hair here. All my hair is on the stick. I mean, it looks really <laughs> cool. But I mean, I didn't look cool, obviously, but the stick, I mean, it really worked. That was, uh, that was a weird one. And I have fallen off, um, you know, when you get like a drum riser and your kit can barely fit on it, it's so small. I've fallen back off the drum riser before. Yeah, um, yeah that's also not a great look, but it's not <laughs> as funny as the hair coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had hey. so like that. <laughs> But drummers are so like at uh, the back. Did anyone notice that your hair is out? Like... <laughs> well, probably because one side of my hair was like this short. <laughs> this side was just really long. <laughs> that's funny. I was probably really not happy at the time, but now I'm like, that's a good one. <laughs> well, do you have, um... oh, that is really good. <laughs> so. I think that's why it's all like a good advice for drummers. So like, don't put hair extensions. Don't wear, hair, don't wear hair extensions, totally. Um, <laughs> good advice for drummers. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go, yeah, don't, yeah. I, 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 try, or I, I drum in um, like heeled boots and everyone's always like, how are you drumming in those boots? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's really good actually to use my heel to keep time on the hi-hat. Like, uh, I would recommend just trying those out. Some Cuban heels. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember so like Stephen Morris so like saying one of his advice is get comfy shoes. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> Different so like style for um yeah cha couples. challenge yourself yeah exactly exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh um Nick Nick Cotter actually says uh, thank you uh first this is cheering me up as I lie sick in bed oh no oh no Nick oh, oh it's poorly yeah. is it self inflicted yeah. or is it yeah I hope oh. it's, yeah yeah we'll get well soon Nick and thank get you well because soon. Yeah, so um, he's the one who said, you know, you're doing the best now. So <laughs> thank you he so is, much. He's wonderful. Yeah, I always look forward to seeing him when we play yeah. London. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully he'll come back to Manchester someday. Or maybe in Hebden Bridge, you know, where you like see them. So. <laughs> yeah. um, tomorrow, actually, is uh, National Hobby Drummer Day. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay, I need to get some hugs in then. <laughs> <laughs> so big hug to you now for tomorrow. So um, I know Thank it's you. just virtual, but big hug to you. Oh, Nick said. <laughs> oh, Nick said that it's not self-inflicted. It's flu. Oh, I'm sorry. That's good. That is good. Yeah. So. Do you have any plans? You need to go out tomorrow and then so sort of, like meet lots of people. <laughs> you know, I have no plans to meet anyone tomorrow, but um, I'm gonna just like yeah, I need to get a hug in somewhere, don't I? National <laughs> hug and drum. That's cute. It's cute. Isn't it? <laughs> I love October because it's like every tenth of October. I always post it on my Facebook page. Who's gonna be hugging? Who, what drum are you gonna be hugging tomorrow? I don't think I'm going in. No, I'm going to go no the castle hotel tomorrow night. But what I don't know the main I don't know the main band who's playing. I know the support and that's what again I'm going to the theme. That's the theme, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> do you want
want to just so uh, like <clears throat> invite people or tell them about the new album because oh another thing that i find really funny because when you mentioned um when, during the john rob interview and i know the title of the new album is the last laugh and then john rob started laughing <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah. have as well, so <laughs> obviously tickling, tickling you somehow. <laughs> so do you want to just sort of like, you know, tell people about the new album and also about the tour and invite yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so new album, The Last Laugh, out next Friday. Um, it's very funny, apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> There are a few giggles in there, I think, actually. Um, so I hope people like it. And we are playing four gigs in November. Uh, Edinburgh, Hebden Bridge, London and Birmingham. And that's it. So tickets are selling well, so get involved, yeah? Yeah, and then uh, we'll start again next year. And then hopefully there'll be more gigs next year. We never know. You don't know, yeah. Let's, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got so like a lot of friends in the Philippines. I'm not sure if they're really so like aware of the Nightingales, but hopefully after this, so, <laughs> after yeah, this exactly. episode, right. <laughs> they will check it like, out. Who the hell is this girl? What's she on about? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's never too late to discover. Yeah, it's never, yeah, yeah, it's never too late to so, like uh, you know find out about bands and you know new yeah. bands or new what i call new old bands you know the bands that you missed exactly. out on so, yeah. exactly yeah well thank you so much Aww, thank you so thank much you. for saying yes to ask the drummer and i know it <clears throat> i know when i saw you or when we met for the first time it must have looked like who's this or like stalkers or like in the ladies no. toilet asking me no <laughs> Not at all. I mean, it was a weird moment. So I'm not going to lie. But it was an absolute pleasure, and um, it was really nice to chat to you. It just feels like chatting to a mate. So you did. I know you were nervous, but you you've done great. Yeah. Like, thank you. Great questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Yeah, that'd be great to be my guest. And um, yeah, take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. And big hugs again for tomorrow and hope okay. you get lots of lo lots and lots of hugs tomorrow as well Hopefully, you should call well, like a, you should have a t-shirt that says i'm a drummer <laughs> it's national i do drummer. not want to be no <laughs> i'll just that is gonna bring out some odd people oh, right. so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you're welcome well, you're welcome <laughs> thank you so much. See you again soon. Yeah. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Can I just stop this? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, everyone, for um watching us. And oh, this is so amazing. She's just really, really good. And thank you, Nick. I hope you um feel better soon. And um, yeah, I totally agree with you. She is, she really is the best. So, um, so um, yeah, next week we're gonna have another amazing drummer. Um, so do keep an eye out for the guest announcement post, which I will hopefully do sometime this evening or maybe tomorrow. And so, as always, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Uh, what, whatever's left of it and uh, love music love life and love 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 drummers and don't forget tomorrow if you're going to a gig or if you happen to see a drummer give them a big 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 hug because it's national hug a drummer day so see you again next week bye for now bye